Ulit tayo. Good evening, everyone. Um, good evening si class ko. Uh, Philippine. Good evening po. Hi. Philippine Christian University students, no? So, we already discussed the first part of the Torrens uh, system of land registration. At kaya nga, dito sa ating discussion, si Sir Richard Roberts Torrens na kilala natin na siya po yung ang nagpasimuno or siya ang nag-establish nitong Torrens system of land registration which actually is being followed by almost uh, all uh, countries in the world. No? Ang dami pong nagsunod nitong Torrens system of land registration. Now, proceeding on our second part, uh, ito na po. No? Ang difference ng Torrens Certificate of Title from the Torrens Title. Let's start with the Torrens Certificate of Title. Ito pong uh, Torrens Certificate of Title. Huwag niyo po itong i-mistake sa Torrens Title. No? Because ang Torrens Certificate of Titles refers to the Certificate of Title to the Land, no? which is the best evidence of land ownership issued by the Registry of Deeds under the Torrens Title System of registration. Yan po ang, ang meaning niyang Torrance Certificate of Title. All right. Now, uh, this one under PD 1529 Section 45, it states that every Certificate of Title shall set forth, number one, yung full names of all persons whose interests make up the full ownership in the whole land. Okay, and it includes their civil status and the names of their respective spouses, if married, as well as their citizenship, residence, and postal address. And if the property is covered, belongs to the conjugal partnership, no? it shall be issued in the names of both spouses. Kaya nakalagay spouses Juan and Juanita de la Cruz. Ganon, no? If it is... Uh, conjugal partnership. Although we will learn later on na kahit uh, nakalagay doon is that Juan married to Juanita de la Cruz, it would still be considered as a, a part of the conjugal property. Alright, so ito pong Torrance Certificate of Title, yung titulo mismo, yan po siya ang ibig sabihin yan. And if it is an original certificate of title, ibig sabihin first issue once po yan siya. It may be homestead patent, residential pre-patent, etc. No? And the moment it is transferred from one person to another, it becomes now the transfer certificate of title. Ayan. Now, wag po natin ito siyang lituhin sa pangalan na Torrance Title. Kasi po itong Torrance Title as we have explained last Monday, that it is a land registration and land transfer system in which a state like us in the Philippines creates and maintains a register of land holdings which serves as the conclusive evidence of title of the person recorded on the register as the proprietor or owner and of all other interests recorded on the register. So, ang Torrance title system is actually the system on how the government registers these uh, titles, the certificate of titles, in order that you will be identified as one of the owners, no, or registered owners. No? And, and all transactions, transfers, registrations will be recorded therein. So, sistema po yan siya. Uh, system ng land registration and transfer. Okay? So, baka kasi minsan magkalituhan tayo pag itanong eh, ano ba ang Torrent Certificate of Title? Yun po yung titulo. Yung evidence of ownership. Pag Torrent Title lang ang sinabi, ibig sabihin, yun yung sistema. Okay? Paano po mag-register at mag-transfer ng title from one to another. Okay? Kasi ang dapat kasi na term sana, Torrent System, no? Or Torrent Title System, okay? Kaya lang, pag kinsinortcut ng Torrent Title, aakala natin is yun ang titulo ng lupa, hindi po. Yun po ay sistema. Ang titulo po ng lupa is Torrent Certificate of Title. Alright. Proceeding, ang tanong natin, as we discussed 
uh, uh, last Monday, ano ba ang purpose ng torrent system? And as I said, this has been discussed already in uh, Consuelo Ligarda versus NM Salibi, no? GR number L8936, October 2, 1915, no? It is an N-Bank decision by the Supreme Court wherein it was stated by the Supreme Court na ang purpose daw, ang real purpose ng torrent system of land registration, yung sistema, is to quiet title to the land. So, any and all questions on the land, any all or clouds to the to the ownership of that property, the purpose of the torrent system is to quiet it and say that, yes, uh, tahimik na ito because meron na tayong registered owner at siya na ang may-ari ng lupa because it is an evidence, best evidence of ownership itong certificate of title. And number two, to put a stop forever to any question of the legality of title except for those which are noted in the title itself. Kaya nasabi natin kapag uh, meron tayong nakitang naka-annotate on the title itself like CLOA which carries a prohibitory period not to alienate within the period of 10 years, it means that um, yun siyang annotation na yun is carried to the title and NNL acts that would somehow uh, make you uh, would somehow when you sell the, the, the CLOA title for that matter would somehow question the legality of it kasi annotated nasa sa title dati alright so and as such once the title was registered the owner might res, res, sure, rest secure without the necessity of waiting in the portals of the court uh, to avoid the possibility of losing his land. So, rest assured, baka tulog daw tayo na mahimbing kapag registrado ang ating ang ownership natin sa lupa. Meron tayong title sa lupa. Now, uh, napagtanong ni Sir Bong kagabi, anong the other day, the other night, kung anong pinag-awayan dito sa Ligarda and sa Libe, well, actually, ang pinag-awayan lang dito talaga is actually itong wall na ito. <laughs> May wall kasi, ganito yan, no? sa Ermita, ito si Ligarda at sa Salibi, meron silang kata lupa na uh, pagmamayari. Now, in between sa lupa, there is a wall. Now, ito si Consuelo Ligarda have it registered by filing a judicial proceeding in court to have it registered the land and it included the wall. So, dibinigyan siya ng ng titulo, no? Imagine that was in uh, 1900s pa. Okay. Uh, in fact, this case was decided in 1915. And then, later after, si N. Salibe, okay, nag file din siya ng judicial proceedings for registration of his land kasi katabi man siya. And sinali rin niya yung wall. Kiniklaim niya yung wall. At naisyuhan din siya ng titulo na kasama ang wall. Ngayon, Ang ginawa nito ni Ligarda was that she filed a petition for adjustment no doon sa uh, korte and say na bakit sinali na yung wall na yon eh na naman yan sa akin. Eh ang sabi naman nung ni Salibi ay kasalanan mo yun, hindi ka nag-object during my registration proceedings eh. Tapos ngayon uh, magsabi ka sa akin na ngayon magreklamo ka na hindi nasali na yun. Nandiyan na sa akin na ngayon. So, there are two titles with two similar uh, registration of that particular wall no? kasama sa titulo. Uh, two distinct titles pero uh, both of which uh, may pagmamayari doon sa portion ng, sa wall na yun. Okay. Now, ang sabi ng Supreme Court is that ah, uh, Hindi pwede. Ito yung sinabi ng Supreme Court. Uh, when Ligarda was able to have it uh, titled first under their name, it operates now uh, to quiet the title to the land, to put a stop no, to any question of legality to the title. The first one who was able to be given the registration of that property wins. So, ibig sabihin, nanalo si Ligarda dito. Uh, hindi na pwedeng i-question mo pa ulit dahil uh, na-issue ka na siya ng title. Yun ang purpose ng torrent system, sabi nung 
ni Justice Johnson. Purpose ng ng kung sabihin mong hindi hindi siya nagparticipate during registration proceedings. Eh, ikaw din naman, hindi ka rin nagparticipate yung the time na nagfile si Consuelo Ligarda ng ng uh, judicial titling. Eh, tapos ngayon sabihin mong ganun. So, it means kung sinong nauna, siya ang ang magwawagi. In that case, uh, Consuelo Ligarda won in this particular case and it was uh, adjudicated to them together with her husband yung uh, particular wall na pinagawayan nila si Armita. Alright, so yan ang story ng, ng Consuelo Ligarda and Mauro Preto. Okay, proceeding. Um, ang issuance of Torrance Certificate of Title is not equip act automatically equivalent to ownership. Ha? You have to understand this principle. Hindi po siya automatic na kapag titulado na sa iyo ang property, eh, automatic, ikaw na ang may-ari. Baka kasi sabi nila, oh, sabi mo sir, pag title ng property, uh, it stops, it it puts, uh, it it makes you sleep at night na hindi ka matakot na wala yung property mo, sabi ng Supreme, sabi ng Supreme Court na gisite mo. But, actually, uh, it doesn't mean actually equivalent to ownership. Kasi, it means that you must have legitimate claim of ownership over the real property before the conclusive evidence of ownership principle attached to a torrent title of certificate of title will set in. Okay. So, um, having said that, um, just like for example, if you were able to title the property na hindi naman ikaw may possession sa property, marami nangyayari niya no? sa, sa mga probinsya. Uh, iba ang nakaposession tapos pinatutuluhan ng iba na hindi naman nakaposession Kaya lang, nakapag-apply sila ng for titling, no? Either administrative or judicial titling. And they were issued the title in court. Ah, uh, in, by, issued the title by the uh, issuing agency, either DNR or the court, no? And, ngayon, sabihin niya, oh, alis na kayo dyan, kaya napatituluhan ko na. Hindi big sabihin ganun, na may titulo ka sa lupa, ikaw na may ari. Because, it could still be questioned that, hindi ka naman in possession, paano ka nakapagpatitulo ng lupa na ito? Paano ka nagkaroon ng first time registration nito? may merong house yung nangyari doon sa sa DNR pag-apply mo kasi during the land investigation hindi na-clarify na ako pala ang in possession of property hindi ikaw so parang mga ganun so what we are trying to say is that kailangan pag merong kang titulo ibig sabihin yung claim of ownership mo talaga totoo ikaw talaga yung may-ari ng property alright na Walang talagang kadudududa, walang walang house show na pangyayari, okay? It doesn't mean that automatically kapag meron kang certificate of title is that ikaw na yung may-ari ng lupa. You have to prove and show also that your claim of ownership is a legitimate and genuine. All right. Sige. And then uh, in the case of uh, spouses Alde versus Bernal uh, GR number 169336, March 18, 2010, sabi ito ng Supreme Court ganito. Uh, by title, the law refers to ownership. No? Pag sinabing may title ka dyan, ibig sabihin may ownership issue. Can you yun ang pagmamayari mo? Which is represented by a document. Ano ang represented ng document na yun? Yung certificate or title or yung transfer certificate of title, no? Either the OCT or the TCT, sabi ng Supreme Court. And, sabi pa niya, uh, petitioner apparently confuses certificate with title. Okay. Placing a parcel of land under the mantle of the torrent system does not mean that ownership thereof can no longer be disputed. Kasi, yun ang nangyari, eh, pinatituluhan niya sa pangalan niya, eh, hindi naman pala siya ang eh, in possession of the property. Kung baka bad faith ang pag-secure niya ng pagpatitulo sa sa pangalan niya. Uh, kaya sabi ng Supreme Court, uh, placing a parcel of land under the mantle of the torrent system does not mean that ownership thereof cannot, can no longer be disputed. Pwede palang i-dispute. Pwede palang questionin. Kaya nga, meron tayong kaso sa court, uh, nullification of title, annulment of title. Like for example, when the property that... Uh, was transferred to another person, eh hindi pala, ano, hindi pala sale ang nangyari. Utang pala. Yan ang maraming mga situations right now, ha? Like, for example, meron ng hiram ng 
1 million peso. Ang value ng property is 5 million. Pinam siya ng 1 million. Ang pinapirma yung blank deed of sale, parati yan. Na observe natin, marati yan. Pag hindi makabayad, automatic ilipat ang property under the name of that particular person. Hindi ko pwede. Because the real, uh, the real contract or agreement between the parties is actually a loan or mortgage of that property. It's not sale. So, kung hindi pa nga na nakoconsolidate o nalipat ang title sa pangalan nung may blank deed of sale, pwede mo nga file ng kaso po reformation of contract, no? To show the true intent of the parties. And kung na-transfer na, pwede ka mag-file ng annulment of uh, title or nullification of title because the true agreement is mortgage. Mga ganong klase ba? Ibig sabihin, it can still be disputed. Hindi ibig sabihin, pag nalipat ng title under your name, ikaw na. Okay? So, yun ang mga issues, no? Na dapat yung tandaan, no? Hindi oh, siya automatic na pagtitulado sa pangalan mo, panalo ka na. Alright. And then, sabi dito ng Supreme Court, which I underlined, ownership is different from a certificate of title. The TCT is only the best proof of ownership of a piece of land. Besides, the certificate cannot always be considered as conclusive evidence of ownership. Sabi pa ng Supreme Court, mere issuance of the certificate of title in the name of any person does not preclude the possibility that the real property may be under co-ownership with persons not named in the certificate, certificate or that the registrant may only be a trustee or that other parties may have acquired interest subsequent to the issuance of the certificate of title. So, yun po ang nangyari dito sa case ni Alde versus Bernal. No? Kasi it was titled under his name spuriously without a legitimate claim of ownership, the actual ownership. Alright? Okay. Now, ka last Monday, we discussed a very important uh, topic, no? Itong yung Spanish titles. Yeah. So, these titles that I got, I got this from the internet. Ito lang yung mga kopya na parang Spanish titles. But I have seen one uh, Spanish title dito sa Dubao. Which claim nga doon na all, almost all Ecoland areas, no? And I, it was a very big uh, Spanish title. Photocopy lang. And <clears throat> really, uh, they got it from the, in fact, they got it from Manila pa, na LRA. Pero talaga na, 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 na bigay yung certified true copy. Itong kita ko talaga yun. Kaya lang, hindi ako masyado magbasa, marunong magbasa ng Espanyol. So, pero, intindihan ako, titulo, titulado, ganun. Yung nakalagay doon, pangalan ng tao, ganun. Sa kanya da yung title. Now, Let's once and for all discuss this Spanish title. What is this? No, is would would this still be considered um, evidence of ownership? And what is the rule on this uh, Spanish titles? All right. Um, alam mo nung panahon nung the Spanish regime. Sabi nga natin, 300 years tayo na conquer na na colonize the Spain. During that time, those period of 300 years, imagine, private ownership of land under that uh, regime no, was founded on royal concessions. No? So, ibig sabihin ng royal concessions through act of uh, given by the royal crown, by the Spanish crown. Okay. And ang um, system nila noon, um, they, they follow the uh, system of the Spanish mortgage law. Okay. And ito yung mga ways para magkaroon ka ng property. Number one is yung titulo real. Oh, that is a royal grant. Ibig sabihin, the, uh, the crown or the king may give you a royal grant of bus track of lands. No? Sa iyo na yan. Ah, yan. Ibibigyan sa iyo. Bibigyan ka ng titulo niyan. Alright. That's one kind of title. Spanish title. Second is itong concession special okay special grant ganun din bigay rin ng spanish crown and then number 3 itong composition con el estado adjustment title and number 4 ito ang sikat na marami tayo nito na nagkikita pa noong unang panahon itong titulo de compra okay title by purchase and the last one ito yung 
maraming controversy okay itong information possessoria possessory information title ibig sabihin um you will be given that kind of title however you have to comply 20 years of adverse possession in the concept of an owner okupahan mo talaga yan for more than 20 years and then with that period of time pag ma occupy mo mabibigyan ka ng tinatawag nitong information possessoria title no titulo information possessoria okay so when you have that de hawak hawak mo nyan so marami pong nabigyan dito sa Davao sa Mindanao maraming nabigyan sa sa Luzon Visayas no ng information possessoria all right so yan ang mga ways no and this is under the system of the Spanish mortgage law and hindi sila under the torrent system no kasi iba man iba man ang system ng mga Spaniards all right now proceeding ang panong na ngayon are Spanish titles valid until now kung meron kang hawak diyan baka may titulo ka ng Spanish diyan eh ipakita niyo naman dito no are these titles valid until now all right now this has been answered by the Supreme Court no and i would like you to understand this this is very important in the interstate estate of don mariano san pedro versus court of appeals government record number 103727 and government record number 106946 december 18 1996 decided and bank again by all the uh, justices no and a prefatory statement ng supreme court dito madugo ang sabi niya the most fantastic land claim in the history of the Philippines is the subject of controversy in these two consolidated cases. Imagine, ah, the most fantastic land claim in the history of the Philippines. The heirs of the late Mariano San Pedro Esteban land claim, laid claim and have been laying claim to the ownership of against third persons and the government itself. Even the government of the Philippines, sabi niya, hindi yan sa inyo, amin yan. Because meron kaming titulo, which is approximately 173,000 hectares on the basis of a Spanish title entitled Titulo de Propiedad, numero 4136, dated April 25, 1894. So ibig sabihin, that was four years before the actual session through Titi of Paris by the Spaniards by Spain to the United States. No, kasi 1898 man yung tayong na seed under the Treaty of Paris. So, na-issuean sila ng titulo de propiedad numero 4136 si Mariano San Pedro. At ang nakiklaim ngayon, ang heirs nila. Imagine, ang ano ang kiniklaim nila? Ito ang kiniklaim nila, according to the San Pedro heirs, appears to cover the lands Provinces of Nueva Ecija, Bulacan, Rizal, Laguna, and Quezon. Kanila daw yan. And Metro Manila cities such as Quezon City, Caloocan City, Pasay City, City of Pasig, and City of Manila. Kanila raw yan. And thus, it affects the general lands extending from Malolos, Bulacan to the city hall of Quezon City and the land area between Dingalan Bay in the north and the Tayabas Bay in the south. Ba? Parang buong Luzon, no? Parang sinasabi nilang, amin. Oo. Oh. And then this is, yeah. Oh, ito na. Ito na yung, ano, uh, di San Pedro, no? And, ang um, nangyari here was that uh, the Supreme Court was quite amazed. And, ang daming cases, no? Hindi lang yan mga cases na yan nag-sprout because of that claim by the heirs of uh, the San Pedro, no? Mariano San Pedro. Sabi ng Supreme Court, we have to stop this. Once and for all, i-finish na natin itong issue na ito. Yan ang sabi ng Supreme Court. Oh, anong sabi ng Supreme Court? Okay. Sabi naman ng Supreme Court is that it is settled that by virtue of PD number 892, which took effect on February 16, 1976, the system of registration under the Spanish mortgage law was abolished already. And all holders of Spanish titles or grants should cause their lands covered thereby to be registered 
under the LRA, the Land Registration Authority, within six months from the date of effective effectivity of the said decree or until August 16, 1976. Ibig sabihin po, yung may mga hawak na Spanish titulo noon, kunyari, si San Pedro noon, dapat nirehistro mo sa LRA under the torrent system natin. And it will be until August 16, 1976. On whether or not the government will accept kung yung 173,000 hectares ibibigay sa iyo kasi may constitution na tayo niyan in 1973 kung ilan lang ang kalaki ang pwede nating ma mao no eh, that's another thing that's another story pero dapat yun mo nang first operative act na dapat mong gawin is that within 6 months from the effectivity of itong PD number 892 or until August 16 1976 dapat iyan mo siya iparehistro mo sa LRA. Okay. Because wala na yung Spanish Mortgage Law. Kaya nga, from the Spanish Mortgage Law, tapos nung naging na-cover na tayo ng Philippine Commission, as I said, later on, they crafted this law on system of land registration natin under the torrent system na tayo. Yan. So with that, um, since abrogated na or abolished na yung Spanish Mortgage Law, dinirektahan o sige so nino yung pinamimigyan ng ano ng lupa ng ng mga Spanyol iparestro nyo ngayon dito sa bagong system natin 6 months lang ang binigay sa kanila <laughs> ang tanong ko naman at that time in 1976 paano ang information dissemination for 6 months i-house to house mo ba <laughs> at sabihin oy sino yung may Spanish titles diyan kaya you could not also blame that probably there are some na merong mga Spanish titles na were not able to register within the six months period because hindi man nila alam na merong pala yung PD na yan. Eh, imagine, that is the time, 1976. Diba? So, whether or not uh, uh, may kasalanan ang government for the intervention dissemination, but the problem is that is the law. It is a PD. It's a presidential decree. It is a mandate. So, ignorance of the law excuses no one from compliance therewith. Yan, ang sabi niyan. Uh, the law is hard, but that is the law. Dura lex sed lex. No? Ignorantia non lehit, ex, non excusat. Okay, sa Latin yan, no? Okay, yan ang sabi ng Supreme Court. And then, sabi pa ng Supreme Court that otherwise, non-compliance daw with that uh, registration sa LRA will result in a reclassification of their lands. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, gano-reclassify siya balik whether alienable or not alienable. And, kung alienable, then, open na naman ngayon for everybody who is in actual possession to apply for titling. Either judicial confirmation of title or by way of administrative titling. Okay. So, Actually, noong time na yun, ano pa eh, um, judicial pa because uh, it was an, the earliest part pa. So, you could now apply for a judicial titling. And in fact, kung na-cover ng cadastral survey, uh, pwede na doon. No? So, yan ang nangyari. Non-compliance daw will result, will result in a reclassification of their lands. And Spanish titles can no longer be countenanced as indubitable evidence of land ownership. Hindi na. Yan siya. Evidence of ownership. No, no, no. Nada. Unless you were able to have it registered with the LRA within the six months period. No? All right. And sabi pa ng Supreme Court, ang Section 1 daw ng PD 892 says that Yung system of registration under the Spanish Mortgage Law is discontinued. Okay. And all the lands recorded under the said system which are not yet covered by the Torrance title shall be considered as unregistered lands. Imagine that. So if it is unregistered land, pwede ko in possession ka, pwede ka magparestro it under your name during the time. And all holders of Spanish titles or grants should apply for registration of their lands under Act 496 otherwise known as the LRA, Land Registration Act. Remember, yung Monday, we discussed natin yun siya. Within six months from the effectivity of this degree. 
Thereafter, pag lumampas na yon, Spanish titles cannot be used as evidence of plan ownership in any registration proceedings under the torrent system. So, kung naglampas ka ng 6 months, tapos dating ka doon, dala mo yung title mo, opo, stop na. Because, lampas ka na sa 6 months. Hindi mo na yan siya magamit na evidence of ownership in any registration proceedings. Okay? And, finally, all instruments affecting lands originally registered under the Spanish mortgage law may be recorded under the revised registrative code as amended by Act 3344. At sinali pa ng Supreme Court dito yung whereas clause ng PD-892. Ito kasi ang nakita nila eh. Alright. Sabi ng Supreme Court, ang whereas clause ng decree, no? PD-892, bakit na ipasa itong presidential decree na ito ni Panahon ni Marcos? Was that, Yung fraudulent sales, transfers, and other forms of conveyances of large tracts of public lands to unsuspecting and unwary buyers appears to have been perpetrated by unscrupulous persons claiming ownership under Spanish titles. Kasi, remember, no nagkagera tayo, nagkagera, no? Grabe ang nasira man ang, 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 ang Manila, Luzon. And yung mga... Mga documents natin na wala. So, after the war, nangyari was that maraming, maraming mga fake Spanish titles na naglabasan. <laughs> no? And doon, showing that, krabe fraudulent and transfers. Sales, transfers, forms of conveyances, doon sa large tracts of plans to mga unsuspecting buyers. Yung pala, hindi pala, hindi pala yun siya uh, pwede. At saka hindi pala siya uh, Tama, no? So, tapos ang pinipake nila yung Spanish titles, no? So, nagkaroon ng, nag ang dockets ng court. Karaming masyadong kaso. Kaya, sabi nila, we have to uh, put this to rest. Kaya, kinate si Presidential Decree 892 para stop na itong Spanish-Spanish titles na yan. Ayan. And, itong fraudulent transactions have often resulted in conflicting claims and litigations, no? Kaso daw, between legitimate title holders bona fide occupants or applicants of public lands no so yun ang nakita nila and and the holders of or person claiming rights under the said spanish titles or grants on the other thus creating confusion kaguluhan instability in property ownership and threatening the peace and order conditions in the areas affected grabe yung patayan noon kasi s'yempre agawan ng lupa eh akin ito totoo sa may pera talaga grabe no no so to stop that practice, yung pagpanluloko na yan, yung fraudulent transactions na yan, itong PD-892 ang naisa batas. Alright? And yan ang mga whereas clause dyan. No? At hindi na daw, uh, obsolete na daw yung Spanish mortgage law kasi nga torrent system na tayo. And the Spanish titles to launch which had not been brought under the operation of the torrent system being subject to prescription are now ineffective to prove uh, ownership unless accompanied by proof of actual possession. Parang, ibig sabihin, kung may hawak ka Spanish title, tapos hindi mo na parestro, pero in possession ka, pwede ka pa rin makaparegister, pero under the torrent system, but you cannot use that as evidence of ownership already. Prescribed na yung, yung ownership mo. Ibig sabihin, that kind of title, yan lang ang isang title na hindi indivisible and imprescriptible. Wala na siyang visa. Okay? So, um, ang rule is that although you could still apply if, pero magdepende lang kung gaano rin kalaki rin ang possession mo so under the torrent system of registration and you file it through judicial confirmation of imperfect title alright so yan ang batas and tayo pa dito there is an imperative need to discontinue the system of registration under the Spanish mortgage law and the use of Spanish title as evidence in registration proceedings. Stop na yan siya. Okay. Alright. Uh, ang tanong dito is ito. What protections that a registered owner of a land may have under the torrent's title system? Okay. Let's say, titulado nga ang lupa mo. Wala ng Spanish ha. Tapos na sa Spanish mortgage siya. Do, at saka Spanish titles. Meron ka ng title under the torrent system. Meron ka certificate of title registered under the torrent system. Lahat naman ng titulo natin hawak-hawak ngayon, 
torrents system na yan siya. So, that is a torrent certificate of title. Yan ang protection mo kung ganyan. Pinagyayabang natin na torrent system tayo. Ano ba protection na meron yan? Okay. Okay, the first protection that we have is under uh, Presidential Decree 1529. This was uh, uh, enacted during the time of uh, Marcos. Uh, during the martial law kasi, he was exercising executive and legislative powers. No? We all know that. No? And this is one of the best laws that he enacted. Itong PD 1529. Ang sinasabi sa batas na ito is that Section 47, ito na protection. Registered land not subject to prescription. Ah, No title to registered land in derogation of the title of the registered owner shall be acquired by prescription or adverse possession. Ibig sabihin po nito, ito ang keyword ha, it is indivisible and imprescriptible. Tandaan po niyo itong word na ito, baka maglabas sa board exam. Uh, indivisible, indestructible. Indes, indestructible hindi masira no baga hindi matibag matibay yan hindi talaga masira imprescriptible hindi magprescribe ibig sabihin kapag inagaw ang property mo kahit anong tagal na abot na ng 20 years pero titulado yan uh, ni squat merong may informal settlers or squatters professional squatters yung yung action mo to recover it back can never prescribe because pag title daw sa lupa is imprescriptible. Ah, yan ang ibig sabihin niyan. Yan ang protection na binigay under Section 47 of PD 1529. Alright? So, klaro yan ha? And then, second protection. Ano pa yun? The certificate is not subject to collateral attack. Okay. Ano bang ba ibig sabihin ng collateral attack rule? Okay. Kasi ganito 'yan. If in case I will file a case against you for recovery of possession or ejectment, papadisin ko kayo. Or quieting of title din ng gugulo kayo saying that I am the owner of the property at titulado ito sa akin. Okay, titulado ito sa akin. Malis ka. So, I'm the plaintiff, you're the defendant. Alright? Now, in your answer, you are not allowed to say, ay, peke mo yung title mo. Ay, yung title mo, hindi yung tunay. Yung, yung pagkuha mo niyang yung title na yan is ano yan, yung, yung true fraudulent transaction or fraudulence means niloko mo yung, yung parents ko or yung kapatid ko kaya mo na title yan sa pangalan mo. You cannot do that. That is not allowed collateral attack. Ibig sabihin, the only way that you could question the legality of that particular title is to file a separate proceeding, direct proceedings, questioning it, questioning the legality of that particular title. Hindi pwede i-collateral attack mo. Oh, parang sinabi ngayon na, uh, Uy, may utang ka, magbayad ka. Ay, ikaw din may utang, hindi ka pwede magsabi ng no collateral. Okay, ibang usapan yon. You file another case in court. You question the validity of the title, the legality of the title under this name. Kaya ang nangyayari, if may kasong ganyan, ang ginagawa is that magsa-answer siya, tapos mag-file din siya ng another case, i-consolidate ngayon namin yan para ma-determine kung sino talaga ang may-ari. So, ibig sabihin, when you attack someone's title, you have to file a case directly in court. Alright? So, that is clear, ha? No collateral attack rule. And then, uh, it's a constructive notice upon registration. Ito naman yung tiyatawag na constructive notice rule, no? Remember mo yung notice to the whole world na sinasabi natin that any any and all uh, annotations on the title it operates as a notice to everyone dealing or transacting to that property that you are notified that there is an encumbrance stated therein in the property. Sabi nga ng Section 52, every conveyance, mortgage, lease, lien, attachment, order, judgment, instrument, or any affecting registered land shall be 
if registered, filed, or entered in the Office of the Register of Deeds for the Province of City, be constructive notice to all person from the time of such registering, filing, or entering. Ibig sabihin, ano ba yung mga na-annotate? Adverse claim. List pendants. Mortgage. Attachments. Levy and execution. Proclosures. Lease contracts. Rule 74. Uh, provisions yung sa deed of restrictions. Mga ganyan. Lahat ng annotations. Now, pag bubili ka ng lupa, eh hindi ka nagtingin sa registry of deeds. Nagkuha ng certified through copy. And then, you bought it. Yung pala pag kuha mo ngayon, paglipat mo ngayon, nakita mo pala, meron palang lease pendants. May adverse claim ba? Eh, sabi mo, hindi ko alam ito kasi nung pinakita niyo yung owner's copy sa akin, ay eh, malinis. Hindi naman ko natingnan ang ROD original file. Sabi ng batas, no, it operates, it is a notice to the whole world that pag merong inscription doon sa file ng registry of deeds, ito yung sinasabi sa section 52, it is a notice to you. It is as if it is presumed that you know about it. Kung hindi mo nalaman dahil hindi ka nagkuha ng certified true copy, ah, ikaw ang tanga. Kasalanan mo yan. <laughs> so, ibig sabihin, wala ka nag-conduct ng tiyatawag nating due diligence. And so, you will be responsible for the consequences of your uh, actions. Okay? So, take note of that, ha? So, yun ang tiyatawag na constructive notice rule. Kasi, baka lumabas sa bar ito, about sa board exam itong mga question na itong mga indivisibility of and imprescriptibility of the title na no collateral attack rule itong constructive notice rule so take note of this no so yun ang mga protections na nakita natin under presidential decree number 1529 the property registration decree now how about uh what else, no? Meron tayong sa Civil Code of the Philippines under Article uh, 1544. Yung protection against double sale kapag uh, you were able to register it first. Katulad ng kaso ni Ligarda at Salibi, siya ang nakapauna, nakapatitle. So, he is protected with that. Kaya kung napatitulad ulit yung kanyang ano, yung kanyang portion ng wall, Eh, hindi na pwede kasi nauna siya eh. Ganon din sa double sale. Kapag merong double sale na nangyari, no? the first one to register it. Now, I want to share to you um, a video lecture that I, uh, I I made. no And I would like you to read kung watch this one. I don't know if others were able to watch this, but uh, I would like you to watch this no para maintindihan ninyo. Good morning. Welcome back to our lecture room. Ngayong araw na ito, pag-usapan natin ang double sale of land. At sino bang mayayari, ang first buyer o ang, or ang second buyer? Ngayon, ito po bang takatanungan is that naging biktima ka ba ng double sale? Or naging biktima ka ba ng inyo pong katangahan sa pag hindi pag nung nabili nyo yung property agad-agad? Yan po ang mga bagay na pag-uusapan natin ngayong araw na to sa ating video lecture. Magpapatuloy tayo after the short intro. Stay tuned. Okay, welcome back. So, double sale of land. Ano nga ba ito? Sino mga mamayari? First buyer ba or second buyer ba? So, again, as usual, gagawa tayo ng senaryo. No? So, senaryo natin is ito. Ito si landowner seller, registered owner ng property at naibenta niya ito kay buyer number one at naibenta niya kay buyer number two. Nangyari, paano nabenta kay buyer one at kay buyer number two? Madalaman natin ang mga instances at umaparaan kung paano nangyayari ito. But for the meantime, ang nangyari kay seller and landowner, ayon takbo na. Di mo na yan makikita. Then after that, naglaho na parang bula. Okay, discuss natin ngayon, paano nangyayari itong double sale? May mga instances po ako na ipipresenta sa inyo kung saan 
usually nangyayari itong double sale. Number one, ang seller uses a fake title. Okay. The first buyer na binentahan niya is a fake title ang gamit. Ang second buyer na binentahan niya is original title niya. Dalawang beses niyang binenta. Kung paano hindi na-detect ni first buyer na peke yung titulo na binigay sa kanya, hindi natin alam kung bakit. Either di talagang tanga siya o talagang napakaganda pagagawa ng peke na titulo. Alright, ang question ngayon is sino ang mamayari? Si first buyer ba or second buyer? Sabi ng second buyer, ako dahil ako may hawak ng original na title. Sabi naman ni first buyer, hindi dahil ako ang unang nakabili in good faith at may deed of sale ako. Yan ang mga issues na uh, pag-uusapan. At talagang magkakabangayan yan. Darating yan sa korte. Of course, uh, both of them spent money to buy that property. Okay. Second instance. Itong failure of the buyer to register the sale with the ROD. Kasi, ang nangyayari kasi minsan, ang ginagawa ng buyer is that hindi muna niya i-transfer ang title. Hindi niya muna bayaran ang taxes. Kasi wala pang pera. Ngayon, sa katagalan ng usad ng panahon, maan pa COVID, eh, nakahiring si, ano, si seller na hindi pa niya naita-transfer. Eh, medyo sira itong... Konti ito si seller eh, no? Medyo loko ba? So, ginawa niya, pagtingin niya ng kuha siya ng certified true copy, hindi pa nga talaga na-transfer. Nag-file siya ngayon ng petition for issuance of new title. At na-issuan siya ng bagong titulo sa pangalan niya. Ibinenta niya ulit. So, nagkaroon ngayon ng double sale. So, sino mayari? Yun ba first buyer na hindi niya nirehistro ang kanyang... Uh, ang kanyang sale agad sa registry of deeds or itong second buyer na sabihin natin na restro niya agad ang titulo under his name. Yan. Now, ito pa, multiple registration. Meron bang instances po na nangyayari na nagkakaroon ng multiple registrations? Ibig sabihin po, nagkakaroon ng dalawang titulo na puro original title. Hindi siya peke. Okay, paano nangyari yon? May mga sitwasyon kasi noon na wherein meron ng old title. Ang old title noon kasi hindi nakasaad doon isang description lang ng lupa. Sometimes nakalagay doon dalawa, tatlo, apat na klaseng lupa ang nandoon. Kasabihin niya yung lot 1, lot 2, lot 3, lot 4. Siguro nagtitipid sila ng papel noong unang panahon, no? Para apat na lupa sa isang titulo. Pero iba-ibang technical description. Si lot 1, lot 2, lot 3, lot 4. Ngayon, sa tagal na panahon, siguro yung lot 1, eh, kahit na titled siya, eh, hindi na naaayos nung lot owner. Here comes another person. Nakita niya na bakante. Kita niya... Uh, Wala. Ni-applyan niya ngayon ng patent, land patent title sa DNR. At uh, miraculously, naisuhan din siya ng bagong titulo under his name with the technical description similar ng lot number one na nandoon sa old title covering for lot uh, title description. So, merong old title at may new title, multiple registration. Ang problema niyan ngayon kapag sabay nilang ipagbili ang properties. Or kahit na isa lang ibenta ang property, magkakaroon ng tiyatawag na double sale at magkakaroon ng problem as to who will be the owner. The owner of the property kung yung buyer ba nung covered sa old title or yung buyer ba nung sa bagong registered na land patent title. Yan ang issue po na sasagutin natin. Well, baka kasi tinatanong nyo ngayon sa isip nyo. Sandali, si attorney, nag-discuss kaagad ng double sale ng buyer. Eh, paano si seller? Ah, eh, si seller po, huwag po kayo mag-alala. Yan po, himas rehas po siya. Kapag uh, maraming mga maluloko talaga na seller, no? And 
they will, patong-pato ang kaso nila, they will be charged with so many cases like estapa through falsification of public document, yung perjury, perjury, marami, no? So, pag mahuli, okay? But of course, you could file a case against them. There is no question na responsible talaga siya sa action niya ng pagbenta ng dalawang beses. Mali yun. And that is criminally and civilly punishable under the law. Alright? So, but ito ang mabigat. Ang pag-usapan si buyer 1 and buyer 2. Sino ba ang magmamayari? Kasi talagang magkakagulo ito sila. Mag-aaway ito at sasabihin ng isa, ako ang may-ari ng property. Sabihin ng isa, no, that's mine. Yan. At in most cases, aabot talaga yan sa korte. And the court will be forced to decide who will be the owner. Actually, ang guide lang naman yan is ang good faith or bad faith. Kung sino yung in bad faith sa dalawa, yun ang hindi magmamamayari. Ang sino ang good faith sa kanila, yun ang may are ng lupa. Okay? Let us discuss. So, ang ating batas po niyan is ang rule on double sale sa Civil Code of the Philippines nitong Article 1544. Simple lang po ang nakasaad dito nito. Ang sabi dito is that kung personal property, discuss din natin sa personal property ha. So, sino yung first possessor in good faith? Katulad ng kotse, personal property yan siya. Nagkaroon ng bentaan. Sino ang naka-first in possession of that? Tapos may deed of sale. Tapos yung mga ba other kinds of personal properties, animals, uh, rep, TV, mga appliances and everything. These are personal properties. No? So, whoever is in first possession of that property with appropriate sale papers, yun po ang mayari po. Alright, so question about that. Let us now go to immovable property. Okay? Let us proceed. So, ito ang house and lot. Ang rule on immovable is that ownership shall belong to the person who acquired it in good faith and first recorded it in the registry of deeds. Ibig sabihin lang po is that sino po ang unang nakabili? Dapat nakabili. Tapos dapat in good faith po siya. Tapos siya po yung unang nakaparehestro. So ulitin natin. Uh, meron siyang kasulatan sa pagkabili. Tapos good faith siya pagkabili. Pagkatapos siya ang unang nakarehestro. So for example po is that sa buyer 1 and buyer 2 natin is that si buyer 1 eh ang tagal niya nirehestro. Kaya nga sabi natin nagkaroon ng petition for lost title si seller na kahiring siya. at ibenta niya kay buyer 2. Ngayon to si buyer 2, walang kaalam-alam na naibenta na pala ito. Kasi pagtingin niya doon sa property, wala namang tao. Tapos, ang title, legit. Pagkatapos, and there is no encumbrance or anything. So, he is considered as a buyer in good faith at siya po, at talaga binayaran kagad yung taxes Nagkaroon ng Certificate Authorizing Registration, bayad siya ng Transfer Taxes, Registry Fee sa ROD, at naisyuan siya ng bagong title under her name. So siya po ang buyer in good faith, and therefore siya po ang may-ari ng lupa. Si buyer number one is that dahil sa kanyang katangahan, di po lang katangahan, ang tawag po niyan, latches, no? When you sleep on your rights, tinulugan mo ang karapatan mo na dapat ikaw ang unang may karapatan na mag magrestro ng property. You are considered as, uh, hindi ka naman in bad faith, pero you'll be considered as in latches or sleeping on your rights. Kasalanan mo. Although you have a recourse against the first buyer, there is no question about it. Kung makita mo pa siya, papailan mo pa siyang kaso, 
ma-return ng money sa iyo, etc. Yun ang remedy mo. Pero, hindi mo makukuha ito ngayon kay second buyer. Alright? Because yung second buyer in good faith, siya na po ang may-ari ng property. Okay. Now, how about kung a property is unregistered pero eligible and disposable? Hindi public lang ha. Unregistered siya, walang titulo, may tax tech lang and everything. Ano ang ang rule dito? Ang rule is that Sino ang magmay-ari nito kung sakaling magkaroon ng dalawang bentahan is that ang unang nakaposesyon. So, kailangan meron talagang sale agreement din, no? Tapos, sining una nakaposesyon sa unregistered land, eh, siya po ang magmay-ari ng lupa. Kung wala namang inscription po, no? Ang sasabi po natin ng batas is that kung sino po ang may pinaka Uh, matanda na titulo. Hindi po ito to titulo ng lupa kasi nga unregistered dan eh. Ang ibig sabihin po ng title dito, sabi ng Supreme Court, kung sino yung makapakita ng papel ng papel ng bentahan, yung sale or deed of transfer of rights. Okay? Kasi may instance kasi na yun nga, ang property nagkaroon ng bentahan, wala namang nakaposesyon. Binili lang, unregistered uh, alienable disposable land. So, yung first dito, yung first in possession, hindi applicable. Kasi wala naman nakaposesyon sa dalawa. So, kung sino ngayon ang makapakita ng oldest title, meaning yung oldest pinakaunang uh, deed of sale or kasulatan sa bentahan or deed of transfer of rights, kahit yung kasulatan ng bentahan sa barangay, yun po ang magmamay-ari ng lupa. Kaya nga, always ko sinasabi po, doon pa sa mga video lectures natin about unregistered, uh, alienable and disposable land pag bumili kayo. Risky, yes, but you have to comply with these two things. I-add nyo po itong dalawa, possession at saka sino yung unang nakabili, oldest title. Meaning to say, kailangan ikaw yung buyer and possessor with the oldest title. Ako ang first at meron kayong kasulatan. Check po yan. Ikaw ang owner ng property. Alright? Now, in all these cases po, remember, remember that you must be in good faith. Dapat wala kang alam na naibenta na pala ito sa iba bago na ibenta sa'yo. Kasi pag meron kayong alam, ibig sabihin yan, in bad faith kayo. And you will not be the owner of that property. No, 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 no. Sabi ng character natin. Okay? So, take note of that. So, before I end, I will discuss to you an actual scenario. This is between Jose Seller and Fred the Buyer. Magkaibigan po ito sila. And si Jose Seller, widow siya. Sa titulo niya, nakalagay doon, Jose Widow. Tapos, sabi niya, pare, gusto ko ibenta itong parcel of land ko uh, sa kahan ito, eh, farm lot, para naman ma-enjoy ko yung property ko. Kasi yung mga anak ko na sa US, na sa abroad, eh, may sarili ng buhay. Ayaw na nga umuwi dito eh. Kasi mga American citizen na eh. O, nagpa-naturalize na doon. Eh, gusto ko naman mag-enjoy dito ng sa akin, para may sarili na akong pera. So, si Fred, kaibigan niya, o oh, sige, uh, bilihin ko yan, pare, walang problema. So, nagkabenta, nagkabilihan sila. Now, ang mind naman ni Fred, sabi ka, hindi ko muna ito i, pare, pag hindi ko muna ito i-transfer sa pangalan ko, ha, kasi, wala pa akong budget para sa pag-transfer uh, ito under my name. Wala pa akong cash para sa taxes. Mahalang taxes eh. Ah, wala problema. Sabi nyo, nandito lang naman ako eh. Anytime, para kung gusto mo i-update natin ang deed of sale, update natin yan para hindi ka ma-penalty. Okay. So, they parted ways. Nagkabayaran, nagkabigay ng pera. Parted ways. Si Fred went somewhere. Kasi, however, he died. no Fred did not know that his friend who said died. Kasi nga, si Fred busy rin masyado. Pumunta na ibang lugar and everything. He thought that Jose was just there. Uh, malakas pa naman yung kaibigan ko and everything. So Jose died and yun nga. 
Because of that, yung mga anak niya sa United States of America has to come dito sa Pilipinas to attend to the burial of their father. We do na eh, nag-iisa na lang. So, talagang nag-mourn sila and they spent their time here uh, sa by reunion na. Ganyan man ang nangyayari usually. And later, they were confronted with the fact that they have to settle the estate of the deceased. So, kumonsulta sila ng bugado, CPA, Sir, sir tulungan nyo kami. Kailangan namin isettle ang mga properties ng father namin dito sa Pilipinas because we do not have any intention to come back here, must to stay here because we are going back to the United States of America dahil may sarili kaming buhay doon, may pamilya kami doon, may mga ari-arian na rin kami doon. Settle na namin ito lahat. In fact, gusto rin namin ito ibenta na para we could move on with our lives. Okay, so what happened was that they searched for the properties of this uh, Jose, their father, no? And ito nga, nakita yung lupa, yung may condo, ang daming lupa, no? may house and lot pa, bank account, etc. Super dami. Now, sabi nila, uh, sabi nung lawyer na gihire nila, ang CPA, na you have to pay for the estate taxes of this. Ang daming properties ni Papa, paano ito? Well, you could sell one na uh, property. In fact, under the train law, allowed dyan eh, magbenta ng isang property tayo para... Uh, magamit nyo pambayad sa estate tax para hindi kayo mabigatan. You will not use your own money in doing that. O sige, um, I think we could uh, find here from the tree kung sino ang, ano ang ating ibebenta. And it happens na merong interested na bumili nitong farmland. It's an old lady. His name, her name is Maria kasi gusto nga niya mag na rin doon, magtanim-tanim siya ng mga gulay at gusto niya bilihin. O oh, sige po, uh, wala problema, yan ang ibenta natin. But ma'am, you have to understand, isasettle pa namin ng estate. So hinalughog, hinanap ang mga titulo, it was found out that sabi nila, the title was lost. Hindi kasi nila alam na yung taga, yung mga bata, yung itong uh, heirs, they did not know that it was already sold to Fred. Tapos nung they got a certified true copy of the title, eh wala namang naka-annotate na sale. Sabi niya, ay, baka nawala ito ni Papa. Alam niyo na si Papa, medyo matanda na rin eh, kung saan-saan niya nilagay. Nakita nila, walang naka-annotate na mortgage. Nakita nila, walang naka-annotate na sales. So, hindi ito na ni Papa, hindi ito ni Benenta. So, they were really thinking na everything is uh, uh, nawala lang talaga ang titulo. So, what, what happened was that they hired a lawyer. Then they filed a petition for lost title in court. So nagkaroon ng hearing po at meron posting uh, notice ang ginawa ng korte. Pinosyad sa barangay na merong petition for lost title in court. And nagkaroon ng hearing. Tapos tinanong kung, sir, wala talaga. Naprenda ba ito? Wala. Hindi po namin alam na sa US kami. In fact, malinis ang titulo, certified through copy. Tapos, gumawa ba kayo na happy day bito plus? Yes po, ito po, naka-annotate na sa certified room copy. May pending case pa ito? Wala po, meron kaming certification na walang pending case po ito. Tanong pa si Jess, ah, ito ba yung event? Ay, hindi po eh, talagang wala eh, clean oh, wala talagang nothing. Technically, I think uh, my father uh, lost it, sabi nung, nung heirs no, when they testified in court, no? So, having proven everything, including the jurisdictional requirements at saka yung proof na nawala talaga ang titulo, at na, of course, with all the evidence, the judge decided that, okay, granted a petition, directed the registry of deeds na mag-issue ng bagong title under the name of the deceased Jose. Okay. Hindi man pwede idiretso yan sa pangalan nung namatay. So, still under the name of Jose. Kasi ang nawala, title na sa pangalan ni Jose. They did not know that it was with Fred, no? And Fred did not know of this proceedings also. Kasi si Fred at that time was traveling the Philippines. Hindi niya alam anong nangyayari, no? Hindi rin niya alam na napatay na pala si Jose. Okay? So, with that, a new title was issued. Then, uh, meron ng extrajudicial settlement of estate with sale. Actually, ang technique niyan is that uh, habang nag-file ka ng petition for lost title in court, pwede ka nang gumawa ng extrajudicial settlement with estate 
of estate with sale para bayaran mo ng estate tax no pwede na i-settle yung estate tax kung ka na ng teknik yan hihingi ka na sa buyer ng down payment konti pambayad sa estate tax and then uh, ang sale din i-register na yan para paglabas ng e-car waiting na lang paglabas ng title under the name of Jose ibibigay na lang yan sa registry of deeds para ang next step is that lalabas ng title under the name of the buyer and the other properties now uh, nandoon na sa pangalan ng mga heirs no or kombinentary nila with the other buyers ganun ang mangyayari noon so in this case ang, ang pinag-usapan naman natin yung lupa no na subject of the first sale is that it was already uh, transferred no kasi meron na extrajudicial settlement with sale at meron ng title na nilabas Uh, ang registry of this by ish, by decision because of the decision of the court so nagkaroon ng titulo under the name of Maria under her name and she is the buyer second buyer of the property now nung nalaman ni Fred nung babalik niya ba meron na katira doon sila bakit nga nila nangyari so nagpa-trace back siya doon Wow, meron na cancel yung first title na hinahawakan ko tapos in everything tapos nagkaroon ng court decision. So, nagkaroon ng kaso sa korte at sabi niya, I am the first buyer and uh, I am buyer in good faith and he's my friend. I just did not know that, that he died. Sabi naman ni Maria, well, I'm also a buyer in good faith. I did not know that it was sold. Wala namang tao doon sa, sa land na binili ko. Tapos, uh, the property was uh, bought by me from the from the heirs. Sabi naman ng mga heirs, wala kami alam na binenta ni Papa. Bakit hindi mo naman nirehistro ka agad? Or nagpatatak ka man lang na ang kahit anong dokumento dyan na, na, na laman lang namin. Or nag-inform ka man lang sana sa amin na na nabibili mo yung property by writing as a letter. Maybe you could have gotten that email from our father and uh, na-email mo man lang kami. So, wala na eh. Nagastos na namin ng mera. Wala na everything. But the question is, who is the owner of the property? And the answer is that it is Maria. Because of Fred's fault that uh, he slept on his rights, kinalugan niya yung karapatan niya na siya na dapat ang unang nagparehistro, eh, yun po yung katangahan at sorry na lang po, wala po siyang mahabol. Because number one, si Jose Seller is already deceased and second, ang mga heirs, when they sold it, they sold it in good faith also. This is the instance where in, ang seller is not in bad faith. He is in good faith because wala man siyang alam. Because they are heirs. Dahil namatay na po yung owner. Therefore, Maria here is a buyer in good faith and she is the rightful owner of the property. Sorry na lang si Fred. Quits na po yung kanyang pinayad. Okay po? So, I hope you learned something from our lecture today. And next time, I will catch you again going to discuss a very important topic. See you. Bye. Alright, so, yun po, no, ang nangyari sa kaso ni Jose and Fred. That's an actual case that I handled. Uh, actually, I represented the heirs in this uh, scenario. Alright, so, yun po ang isang protection kapag narehistrong mo, no, under the torrent system. Ang um, ang conveyance, ang pagbili mo ng property. Okay. Good morning. Welcome And, back to... Uh, wait. <laughs> I will... Uh... Okay. Okay. Ano pa bang mga protections na meron tayong pwede pa nating uh, makuha by registering dito sa pag registered tayo under the torrent system no in as we discussed uh, last uh, Monday yung curtain principle no 
Ang sabi dito is one does not need to go behind the certificate of title as it contains all the information about the title. This means that ownership need not be proven by long complicated documents that are kept by the owner as in the private conveyancing system. All of the necessary information regarding ownership is on the certificate of title and yung another principle na tawag nating mirror principle. And my new Itong dalawang principles na ito, it's possible na baka lumabas lang no? kasi may nasa Supreme Court case kasi isang Supreme Court case wherein uh, discuss itong isang principle na ito. So sa mirror principle, the register reflects mirror accurately and completely the current facts about title to each registered lot. Ibig sabihin po, the you have there is no need to look beyond the title for one to be considered in good faith in dealings with registered land. Kasi sabihin, um, no need to look, no? Na sabihin mo na, uh, pag yung titulo is uh, malinis siya at saka uh, clean title siya, tapos pag ocular inspection mo, walang problema. Like doon sa nangyari kay Maria, no need to look beyond the title, no? Hindi ka na magtanong-tanong kung napenta pa ito kasi malinis ka eh. And if you have that, and once you get a certified true copy, no, tapos ka, ang malinis niya, ang rule is that you are protected here under this principle. Itong curtain and mirror principle natin. Alright? So take note of that, no? Okay. And in fact, uh, as I said, in the case of uh, spouses Juanito, R. Villamil, etc., versus Lazaro Cruz Villarosa. Ang sabi ng Supreme Court here is that well settled daw ang rule na every person dealing with a registered land may safely rely on the correctness of the certificate of title issued therefore. And the law will in a way oblige him to go beyond the certificate of title to determine the condition of the property. Okay may safely rely on the correctness of the certificate of title issued therefore. Hindi na daw obligahin ng batas na hanapin mo pa beyond that certificate of title to determine the condition of the property. And when there is nothing in the certificate of title to indicate any cloud or vice in the ownership of the property or any encumbrance thereon, the purchaser is not required to explore further than what the torrent's title upon its face indicates in quest for any hidden defects. Ibig sabihin, just by merely looking at the title, etc., and it's clean, go. Pwede ka na. You are considered as a buyer in good faith. Alright. Now, patuloy pa ng Supreme Court dito is that, however, this principle does not apply when the party has actual knowledge of facts and circumstances that would impel a reasonably cautious man to make such inquiry, or ko ang purchaser has knowledge or defect of the lack of title in his vendor, or sufficient facts to induce a belief to inquire into the status of the title of the property in litigation. Ito yung isang case na nahandal ko rin when he bought the property, when the defendant bought the property, and ang nangyari is that he was able nga to register under his name, but he had knowledge actually na nabenta na pala ito at first. Meron talagang, merong witness that was presented to show that he knew. And in fact, text messages na, pare, okay lang ba yan? Di ba, nabili na yan? Ay, parang wala man. Wala man yan na resto. Sige, bilhin ko yan kaya mas mura, ganun. Party siya sa double sale. Therefore, he is not a purchaser in good faith. Another case, wherein, ang nangyari was that um, when he, the property was negotiated to him for sale, eh, hindi siya nag- tingin ngayon ng hindi niya pinuntahan for ocular inspection. And kung pinuntahan lang sana niya, nakita niya na merong bahay doon at may nakatira. And then, 
Ang sabi lang niya is, sa labas lang daw siya ng bahay, pasilip-silip, ayan ang bahay at lupa na binibenta ko sa'yo. Ah, ganun ba? Okay. So, yung pala, subject na pala sa double sale yun. And, nabili niya. And in that particular case, we were able to use this case ni uh, Villamil versus Villarosa na alleging na one who fails within the exception can neither be dominated an innocent purchaser per value nor a purchaser in good faith. So, ibig sabihin, hindi ka pwedeng matawag na purchaser in good faith kapag alam mo yung may defect or uh, may meron ka sanang uh, sufficient facts, no? to induce a belief to inquire more into the status of the title of the property in the because nakita mo merong bahay tapos <laughs> may tao doon sa loob hindi ka man lang nagtanong kung sino yan sila tinatok mo sandali sir bakit nandito kayo anong ba nagrerenta kayo o kayo ba di ba so, dapat meron kang further inquiry na gagawin hindi po lang na puro tingin lang tayo sa titulo na malinis siya pagkakuha natin ng certified true copy. Alright? So, yun ang mga instances of protection. Meron pa akong mga i-discuss na protections like yung the rule on encroachment as well as a lease contract. But uh, I think uh, I will have to to stop now in order to hear some questions, no interactions with you because I intend to give time to interact also with uh, with you para merong po kayo may tanongin hangbang fresh pa ang ating uh, lecture. And I will proceed again uh, our lecture on Friday. No? Tuloy natin ito sa Friday. Sir Bong, I am ready for okay. questioning po. Okay. You have any question, Katarni? Okay, this is your time to question. Yes. Ano nangyari sa inyo? Baka... Pero kayong hawak pang Spanish title. <laughs> Mamaya, double sale. <laughs> Or nagawa niyo ba? Nakapagbenta ba kayo ng dalawang beses sa isang property? Sige, sige. Uh, you ask question. Okay, very question. Sige, isip-isip ng konti. Sige, break mo na lang one minute. Si Menesis Iyala. Si Menesis Iyala. Go ahead. Oh, sir, good evening. Yes, yes, sir. Good evening po. Uh, tanong ko lang po ito, alimbawa po kasi nung araw pa, eh, uso yung verbal na usapan pag pumibili ng property. Total magkakilala naman, hindi na kailangan gumawa ng kasulatan nung binili yung isang area. Okay. Ngayon, nung... Uh, 1994, nung nag-start tumira doon yung uh, auntie ko, nag nagawa naman sila ng, ano, ng tax deck sa improvements nga lang. Mm. So wala silang knowledge na yung tax deck pala na nagawa sa kanila sa improvements lang pala yun. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so ngayon nung dumating yung, ano, yung babayarang buwis sa barangay, nakita nitong mga ears. Mm -hmm na nakapangalan pa sa tatay nila yung lupa na babayarang buwis yung antawag tax deck ng land amilyar opo yung yung amilyar nakapangalan hmm. sa kanila kinabol nila ngayon nito tapos pinapaalis nila doon yung nakwesto yung antik ko tapos sinasabi nila na hindi naman nakapangalan sa inyo yung tax deck yan sa tatay ko niya ang sabi naman ng antik ko hindi binili na yan binili ko na yan sa tatay mo eh saan yung papel wala kayo may pakita sa akin <laughs> Ayun, verbal lang usapan nila kasi mag, magkababayan naman daw, tiwala sa isa't isa, hindi na magulutuhan. So, ano pong ano doon, anong... Nandyan pa, nandyan... Ah, ah, so hindi pa pala nagkaso. Alam mo, alam mo, menaces, no? Napakaganda ng tanong mo. Napakaganda ng tanong mo. And uh, this is it, no? Well, I have to discuss with you two things, no? First, is itong statute of frauds. Yan. Baka rin kasi lumabas ito sa board exam, no? Yung bang verbal na usapan sa bentahan ng lupa, pwede bang may patupad? Basically, kapag nakalista sa tubig ang transaksyon, eh, nakasulat lang sa tubig, no? Walang kasulatan. Ibig sabihin, 
hindi po yan siya enforceable. Hindi po siya maipatupad. Kasi, wala nga kayong kasulatan. Pero may exception. Kapag nasimulan nang maging, nasimulan na ang nagampanan ang usapan. Like for example, the fact na inalaw yung anti mo na tumira at nakaposesyon sa lupa, ibig sabihin, consummated ang sale. That is now an exception to the rule of uh, enforceability. Ibig sabihin, it can now be enforced. Pwede niyang ipatupad yon. And the fact na nakapagtayo siya ng bahay at nakalagay siya ng, ng improvements, and that would mean na siya na yung uh, may-ari ng lupa. Consummated na yung sale. Okay. In fact, ang pwedeng remedy gagawin ng anti mo ngayon is to file a case for specific performance dun sa heirs na magawa sila ng registrable deed or conveyance para doon sa anti mo. Pwede mo pa tuloy pilitin sila na sila ang gumawa ng papeles papunta sa anti mo para mailipat yon Dahil consummated na ang transaction. Remember, in a sale of unregistered land, doon sa discussion natin kanina, is that, una, yung possession. Sino in first possession? Second, tapos sino yung in good faith? Kahit na sabihin natin, wala sila yung kasulatan, under the statute of frauds, the fact na ginampanan na niya yung, ginawa na niya yung dapat niya gawin. Ano bang gawin mo kung ikaw ang buyer? Eh di siyempre, take possession. Di ba? Magtayo ka ng bahay. So, dahil walang reklamo during that period of time ng buhay pa, ibig sabihin, natanggap na ng nung nagbenta sa kanya yung pera. So, it's a consummated yes. sale. Oh, yan po ang ibig sabihin po. It's a good, uh, I do not know if uh, we will have time to discuss that statute of frauds. No, but um, for the meantime, class, if you have time, please uh, watch my video lecture sa YouTube, yung uh, verbal na bentahan sa lupa. Pwede bang maipatupad? Meron po akong magandang discussion doon. Talagang ni-cite ko talaga doon. And in that case, may laban po ang anti nyo. Okay, so may... thank you po. Okay po. That's a very good question, Menises. No? Any more questions? Wala na. Si Perlaine, oh, naka-unmute na si Perlaine. Parang magtanong na yan si Perlaine ngayon. Uh, Perlaine, you have questions? <laughs> Kaya kaya na ako ko doctor ni. <laughs> Parang may laban na ako. <laughs> Pero may laban ka na. Possession kasi number one. Go, possession talaga. Yan talaga yung importante. Mm -hmm. Mga girls ha, alam niya possession. Ako. Oh, pag maglakad kay sa mall kasama yung asawa niyo, kaangkla talaga kayo ha. Ay, Klaro. <laughs> Ay nako. <laughs> <laughs> Pero kahit na Kahit na sabihin mo, hindi, ako yung una eh. Oo, oh, wala eh. Wala naman sa'yo. Yeah, ang ganda yun, oo. Oh. <laughs> Kaya yung, ganun din yan, even, even, ano, even, even sa family, mag-asawa. Kung sino yes, yung kasado talaga, yun talaga, ano, pag hindi pa naanal, yun talaga eh. Ba, walang mga tanong ating mga, ano? Attorney? Yes. Yeah. Oh, Elise. Uh, Elise, yeah. Uh, good evening. Sorry, ah. So, I think uh, ganyan nga po na rinigin ko yung tita. Balik lang po ulit tayo sa case po ng aming chat regarding to the whole family. Kasi po la last two weeks po, uh, yung aking kapatid, no? kapatid na po ng daddy ko, yung anak. Uh, nakita ko po, man. And mayroon silang issue regarding po about this. Tanong ko lang po, attorney. Ah, uh, di ba, ayun po kasi lupa po na yan, under Clawa na po, naka-Clawa, naka-Clawa na po siya. So, so meaning, ito po ang tita, kiniklaim po nga ng tiya ko na to, na yun daw, ah, yun, nine, sorry, nine daw, nine, kasi nagpa-perma daw siya. Yun yung result na nagpa-perma daw po siya ng isang papel dun sa mga yung sinasabi niya mga kapatid or mga anak na kanya, binibiranta po sa kanya, pasa mo po ba yan tayo? Uh, kung merong, kung merong ano, kung merong bentahan talaga na nangyari, bakit hindi, no? Uh, pero kung sabi mo blank paper, 
ang pinapirma, uh, that's a different story. You have to you have to clarify oh. it kung ano ba talaga ang may pinirmahan ba sila? Meron bang harap-harap ba sila sa abogado? Ano yung pinirmahan? Wala Kaya. po. Mm-mm. So, what kind of paper was signed? Ano lang po. Para lang po, ginawa lang daw po ng, ng nuntiya po nga po. Parang tinawag, nagpatawag ng isang, parang dinner, no? And then, andong po yung mga kung sino man yung mga oh. person sa pinang family na ila. Oh, tapos? And then, parang sa sobrang tagal na nga po, parang... Alam mo, yung hinikayat na ibenta, ano ba, talagang 10,000 yung weed nila, parang right nila. Oh. At gano'n, may 10,000, may 20. Eh. Pero ang nagawa lang ng sulat, yung kaya. Oo, oh, okay lang. Basta, alam mo, ganito yan, Iha, no? Um, unless, unless you could prove that there was undue influence or intoxicated sila during that dinner, baka nila sing ng mabuti. Now, <laughs> Ba- baka <laughs> nila uh, uh, eh kung hindi naman tapos bin- oh, sige bilhin ko siya magkano 10,000 sige pirma gawa siya ng kasulatan tapos o oh, pirmahan mo yan napamirma naman din sila basta hindi intoxicated hindi tinakot no? walang intimidation strategy or stealth um, threat no? uh, that would be a valid uh, document take note ha in sale nga po kahit na piece of paper and writing lang na may kausulatan kayo, pwede na yan kahit na hindi notaryado. Okay? Because ang sale kasi, hindi naman siya nag-require ng any form of, uh, of writing. Basta as long as nandoon na klaro ano yung intention ng mga parties to be bound. No? Except lang po, tandaan nyo lang po ito ha, kapag donation. Pag donation po, Kailangan notaryado yan siya. Otherwise, void ang document. Huwag lang po natin kalimutan yan siya. Pero sale? Hindi notaryado? Okay lang yan. Now, question. Meron ka gayong sale na papel lang sa tissue. Nag-usap. Nabentahan kayo doon sa tissue. Nagbayaran. Ganun everything. Ikaw na ang possession sa property. Ngayon, eh, gusto mo na ilipat ang title sa pangalan mo. Pare, gawa na tayo ng ano, ng... ng deed of sale. Uh, tapos punta tayo sa notaryo publiko, panotarize natin para uh, ma- ma-ilipat na ito sa pangalan ko. Itawag niyan registrable deed. Tayo pa yung... Ayoko, ayoko magpirma. Wala, wala, ayoko, wala. Sa Bisaya pa discuss <laughs> Wala, hindi tuloy. Uh, hindi pwede yun. You could, he could file a case uh, in court to compel that person to execute a registrable deed. Nasa Presidential Decree 1529 nga yan eh. So, having said that, doon sa example mo, eh kung talagang uh, alam nila kung anong pinipirmahan nila at during the time of dinner, kung nahikayat man sila at nakapirma sila, eh I think they did it on their own at naintindihan nila kung anong pinirmahan nila. So, later on, they could not question it unless they can prove fraud, intimidation, uh, threat, yan, mga... Ang due influence yan, pwede yan. Pwede nila ipavoid yan. Pero, ipavoidable, no? Kasi valid until annulled man yan siya. No? Pero may prescriptive period lang yan siya. Alright? So, take note of that, ma'am. Kasi, not all times mang good na pag, akala kasi natin, pag may kasulatan, pag walang attorney, hindi na, ano, uh, especially if they understand what they're doing, then that would be considered as valid. Alright, thank you, Tony. Yes, ma'am. Pero ang mamilis doon, Tony, alala kayo dyan kasi nakapossession kayo. Uh, actually po, yun sa amin po so far, uh, medyo secure niya po. Pero ang ina niyo, yung, yung, yung mga anak nung dad, na, anak nung pinsan ko, yun, so yun yung medyo may possession dyan. At magpossession din sila. Ikaya Apo. atin yung magtayo din ang bahay. Uh, uh, hinakayat ko na po talaga. <laughs> Nagbuna sa sabi po. Okay, ma'am Rosalie, you have a question? Okay. Okay. Sir, yes, according ma. Uh, follow up question ko lang po dun sa sabi ni attorney na uh, pag kahit hindi notarize yung document, valid na yun. So, paano po yun i-transfer attorney na hindi naman tatanggapin ng register of deeds na hindi notarize yung document? Oh, kaya nga po, um, pwede mo pong uh, i-request na gumawa ng deed of sale. Pag hindi siya pumayag, file ka ng kaso sa court to compel him to execute a registrable deed of sale. 
Uh, okay, paano pag namatay na yung nagbenta, sir? Transmis okay. Transmissible po yan siya doon sa mga heirs. Gaya rin po yun sa question ni Meneses kanina. Uh, transmissible yan so, sa heirs. Pwede mo i-compel ang heirs mag-execute ng registrable deed. So, paano magiging ano na, sir? Attorney, ano na? Uh, extrajudicial partition na yung papers? It's possible na ganon. It's possible na ganon. May extrajudicial na. Uh, okay. uh, may extrajudicial na. Thank you po. Hindi po. Ah, kasi kung ganyan po, after 7 years, hindi makabayad is automatic na maging kanya ng lupa. Bawal po yan siya, no? Um, that is, uh, hindi po pwedeng shortcut, no? The procedure would be that uh, it should be a foreclosure ang mangyayari. Uh, hindi po pwede yung sabihing automatic. Ang term niya, ang alam ko niyan is pactum commissorium. Parang... Oh, hindi hindi siya allowed na gano no. Although if after 7 years voluntarily po mag-execute naman din ng deed of sale yung kabila, wala namang problema. No? Yeah, there is no problem with that. But uh kung sabihin niyang maging kanya tapos pilitin siya mag-execute ng deed of sale, hindi pwede. Kaya nga yung sinasabi ko sa inyo noon, mayroon silang kausapan MOA. Ito yon, after 7 or oh, say 1 year di makabayad. Tapos mayroon silang open blank deed of sale, hindi pwede yung ganun. Uh, pwede ko, I have many cases there I filed in court na talagang nanalo talaga kasi uh, kailangan kasi um, uh, ano ba talaga yung intention ng, ng, ng parties is kung loan. Kung loan po or mortgage ng property, hindi po pwede automatic ownership yan kasi mayroong procedure kasi you have to foreclose it and you have to give oh, oh, the foreclosure proceeding and you have to give chance of one year chance again for them to redeem mm -mm. Lahat, even in the bank, even in the yes. Kung hindi ka makabayad at pinor-close, you have a one year, uh, one year ka pa, may chance to recover your property. Correct. Di ba meron nga tayo ng pili sa ano natin? Enjoy it, recover it, lahat, everything. It's a bundle of rights. Bundle of rights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Golding. Yung nagbenda po, uh, hindi na po siya malukit kasi na, umalis na po doon sa lugar. Ay, yung nagbenta ang umalis. Ah, uh, Katorni, yung nagbenta ang umalis. Ay, yung nagprenda, oh. Yung nagprenda ang umalis. So, so, ano po ang, ano, ang, ang problem ngayon, no, ang nandoon ka ngayon sa nagpahiram. Ay, well, ang, ang procedure mo niyan is to file a case in court for collection of sum of money tapos i-attach mo yung property. Tapos pag hindi siya sumagot, eh di yung property na yun ang i-automatic ibenta mo for public public auction para mapunta na sa'yo. Yun din na proseso. May attach mo lang siya. Angela, Yes, Angela. Yes, Good evening po, good evening attorney. Yeah. Uh, Tanong pa lang po, marami kasi kaming client sa office. Ang senaryo po, sila po yung nakatira. Kasi po, di ba yung ano natin is yung tax debt is for tax purposes. Yung title is proof for ownership. Ang tanong po, yung may hawak po na tax declaration, sila po yung naka-occupy naka doon sa area. Na sabi po nila dalaga para po binata pas dalaga binata pa sila magkakapatid sila na po yung naka-occupy ang problema po dumating yung time na may nagki-claim na may title tinatanong po nila sir kung may laban po ba sila ang inaano kasi di ba proof of ownership po yung title 
yung tax declaration is for tax purposes? Yes, yes, yes. Na, ibig mo sabihin yung property na yan kasi hindi tutulado, napatituluhan ng iba. Right? Yes po. Oh, originally, hindi talaga titled yun siya. Kaya nga, tax deck lang hawak nung nung mga, nung mga babae doon na nakatira, di ba? Tapos suddenly, meron ngayon nagkiklaim na uh, napatituluhan namin itong property, correct? Yes po. Yun ang explain pero, oh, pero? Pero, pero attorney, hindi daw po taga doon sa area yung nagpatuloy, hindi nila kilala. Kaya nga po ma'am, uh, if you would, if you, if you, if you remember sa aking video kanina, na maraming mga situations na ganyan nga, na hindi big sabihin na pag uh, may titulo ka na, is that automatic conclusive na evidence of ownership mo doon sa property. Hindi big sabihin, hindi yun ang sadya ng batas talaga na automatic. Kasi pwede pa i-dispute yan na ang legality nung paano mo na patitulo ang, ang property under your name na hindi naman ikaw ang in possession. Assuming that is a first time registration. Ha? Uh, kasi kung based sa inyong kwento kasi is unregistered ang lupa. Suddenly, may nagparehistro, correct? So, having said that, Uh, paano niya napatituluhan na hindi naman siya taga dyan, hindi siya in possession of property? And one of the requirements para sa first time registration ng title, yung first time application for a patent, is possession. Possession. Possession eh. Sampung taon na na nga ngayon, under... Possession. Hmm. Ito. So, Yung nung naka-occupy, bakit daw po napatituluhan, hindi naman sila yung nakaposition. Kaya nga po, Uh, so, pwede po nilang i-question in court nyo, no? na kung nandun pa yung one-year period sa pagka-issue ng title, pwede kayo doon mag-question sa issuing authority. Then, kung wala, after that, indivisible na siya, pwede ka na sa korte para ma-question mo ang legality ng transfer. Pwede yun, ma-question pa rin ang ano. Kaya kami gumawa ng lawyer na agad mm, Kuha na po kayo ng lawyer agad Kaya niyan. Lawyer, kasi ano yan eh. Pag-battle lang pa niya. Oo. Oo. At saka huwag silang aalis. Huwag silang aalis. Hindi pwedeng paalisin sila sa lugar. Mm -mm. So take, take, note of, take note of that, Angela. Now, in relation to our study, and baka lumabas sa board exam, in relation to our study, hindi ibig sabihin automatic na kapag napatituluhan mo ang property under your name, eh automatic Sorry. ikaw nang may-ari. Kailangan ang legitimate din ang claim of ownership mo. Yan ang ibig ko sabihin. So kaya nang sabi niya sa atin, paano niya napatituluhan first time titling sa kanyang name, eh, hindi naman siya tagaroon. Hindi mo na siya in possession ng property. Di ba? Tapos ngayon, pinapaalis ngayon, baka umalis kayo, di, ayahay siya, swerte siya, meron na siyang lupa. Maria nang, uh, wait, uh, alam mo, I'm going to make a, a video lecture blog on this one about land grabbing. Eh. Kasi, that is one of the uh, many instances na nangyayari sa buong Pilipinas, itong land grabbing by reason of that. And karamihan po kasi ng mga, yung hindi nakapag-aral na nasa you know, nasa probinsya and everything serbong, uh, they are being matatakot taken advantage. Oh, matatakot na. Ipapakitaan ng titulo eh. Papalisi na sila. Ito yung matatakot. Hmm. Lalo na kung in possession na kayo ng matagal, tapos meron pa yung tax debt na nagyuman. Yes. Makaay kayo ng aminya. Yung pinakatakot po nila is mayaman daw po yung nakapatitulo. Sila, wala daw po silang pera. <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. 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 Good lawyer. May mga pao lawyer naman. May mga pao lawyer naman na pwedeng magdano. Ay, wala na yung ano ngayon. Hindi na yan yung mayaman-mayaman ngayon. Hindi mayaman. Basta alam niya yung batas. Basta yung batas is batas. Basta alam niya yung batas. Mm. Sir Joel, you have a question? Sir Joel. Okay. Yes. yes, Sir Bong. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Um, in relation doon sa yung point kanina attorney ba na biglang napatitulahan yung property kasi naalala ko naalala ko tuloy na yung bisag relative namin parang nasa mga 50 years na sila nakatira doon sa property tapos parang nagbabayad sila parang ang binabayaran nila uh, sila yung nagbabayad sa, sa 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 tax and everything mm -hmm. alam nila na wala talaga ng ano wala mm -hmm. talaga ng may are kasi nga nag-check din naman sila biglang may nag-claim may dalang titulo so nilaban nila 
the problem is talo kasi nga bigla ang mayari pa na company, ang nagpamayari ng company si Lucio Tani. Nakabang na ano sila, na nandimulis talaga sila. So, may mga ganong cases pa. Nagulat sila after 50 years, may biglang may, may ari pa rin yung lupa na yun. Okay, Sir Joe. So, Sir Joe, ah. Sir Joe, I think, uh, at I think ganito yan eh. Yung kanina example ni Angela na nagtanong kanina, is unregistered land yun na alienable and disposable. Itong sa kwento mo, it is possible kasi that that property is a titled land. Hindi ba kayang informal settler ang nakatira dyan for 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, 80 years? Remember, sabi ko sa discussion natin, yung imprescriptibility. So kung kahit anong tagal na nakatira ang isang tao sa isang property na registered or titled, Held. pwede pong bawiin yan nung may-ari ng lupa dahil titulado. Yun ang purpose ng torrent system registration. Kapag nasa torrent system registration ang title, no? certificate of title natin, wherein it is indivisible and imprescriptible. So kahit kaano katagal, basta nag-assert siya ng ownership, at any point in time, pwede niyang bawiin yan. So, Pwede ba yan na pag-chinate po sa ROD, yung, yung lupa na yun, walang, walang record? I mean, wala siyang titulo na makikita sa, 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 sa lugar na yan? Kasi ang sabi, wala, walang record doon. Sa Manila pa daw, eh, ilate sa Manila. Yun yung, um, yun, yung, yun yung kwento doon. So, wala, talo talaga sila. I think um, based on your story, I think uh, ano yan, uh, it is a titled property. Now, ang paano kasi kumuha ng titled property, sometimes it's difficult no, because we do not know ang owner. Now, if we know the name of the owner, but uh, let's say Lushutan, pero hindi natin ang kumpanya pala, corporation. So, how do we know that this is the property? So, ang pinaka the best yan is uh, yung tax declaration ng lupa, no? If you will be able to get the tax declaration of the land, tapos kung meron kayong tax declaration na nasa pangalan ninyo, tapos i-check nyo nyo baka may duplication. Now, yung duplicate na tax declaration na yan, nakalag sa ad doon ang title number. And yung title number, yun ay hingi nyo sa Registry of Deeds. Makikita po ninyo doon ang titulo ng lupa. So, it is possible kasi in situation like this, twice po na-declare for tax declaration ang property. Titled, I think it's a titled land. No? Kasi, kasi ano, <coughs> man BPA. Kasi oh. magkiklaim si Lucio Tan ng, ng galing pa sa gobyerno. Yes, so, yung unregistered. Na, hindi yan ganun. Hindi yan. Ang titled land yan na nabili niya o in good faith. Mm -mm. Wala. Ayun na nga ang nangyari. Eh. Titled land yan, uh, Sir Jawad. biglang nagkatitulo. Uh, if sabihin na lang natin talaga titled yun tapos hindi na-registered sa local or whatsoever. Uh -huh. Kaya... Pero meron, meron, may ruling pa naman doon. Kailangan magbigay siya ng relocation. <laughs> ah, wala, wala relocation. Amin. Wala talaga. Talagang ano sila, dinimulis eh. Uh, Tinanggalan ng... May hita ang barangay. Na, Dapat may relocation yun. Wala, talo yun. Talo eh, meron. Kumuha Baka kasi sila ng, kumuha sila ng lawyer sa PAO. Wala talagang, ganun talaga. Eh, wala kang position ka lang doon sa property. Wala ka namang hawak na titulo. Pero yun lang, nakakagulat kasi nga biglang nagsulputan. May ng ganun. Pero ganun talaga eh. Uh, uh, tama yung sinabi kanina, eh, mayaman, eh, yung, di ba, yung mga nakatira naman, mga informal settlers, sabi na lang natin, yung mga pobre ba. Wala talagang alam sa patas, wala pang bayit sa bugado na magaling. Uh, wala talaga. E, Ganon talaga ang buhay. Yeah, title eh. Magiging mga batas, diba? Hmm. Tsaka title, uh, Sir, Jong, uh, Sir, Sir Bong, eh. Kasi, uh, the, the, kasi rest assured nga, sabi doon sa, sa kaso natin eh, sa libi that you could, you could sleep no, at night. 
na knowing na nobody can take your property, it will never prescribe your action to recover it. Sabi nga ni Sir Bong, yung bundle of rights, the action to recover. Isa pa siguro may diferensya doon, uh, Sir Joel, sa tagal nila, bakit hindi nila inisip na na i-claim, di ba? O mag, mag ano na sila? Yan. register Yun na nga, yun na nga, Sir Bong, yun na nga ang question mo doon. Bakit sa tagal, Sabi nga, na sila na Doon na sila nag-react nung may yeah, nagpakita na nagtitulo. Wala na. Eh, dapat uh, siguro earlier pa, ginawa na nila. Eh, okay, alam nyo di ba? 30 years in bad faith, in bad faith yun. And 10 years in good faith, masyado matagal. Alam mo, uh, I, I, alam mo I will take the cue from Sir Bong. Ha? Um, sabi ni Sir Bong na uh, bakit nga naman, ang tagal nila 50 years na sila doon. hindi sila nagpa-register o nagpa-title ng lupa. Probably, Sir Bong, nung i-attempt nila gawin niya, nalaman nila na titulado na. I think uh, they know. I think they know. Kasi sabi ng DNA, you cannot have this title because it is already titled. Uh, parang squatter talaga. talaga. Squatter. Uh, Wendy, you have a question? Wendy Rabina. Last question. Ako po, Sir. Yes, Wendy. Uh, good evening, Attorney. Yes, ma'am, Wendy. Uh, yung question ko po is about personal property po, uh, about sasakyan po. Kasi yung sasakyan po ng kaibigan ng mama ko po, uh, pina-assume niya po yung sasakyan. Yung sasakyan po, binabayaran pa po sa bangko. So, without ano rin po, verbal agreement lang rin po yung nangyari kasi nga magkaibigan. And then, Um, so, may initial payment po na naganap and then after 4 years po of payment na yung mama na, yung mama ko na po yung nagbabayad and then nagkaroon po ng misunderstanding. So, yung ginawa po nung nakapangalan doon sa sakya, sasakyan is uh, binayaran niya po yung balance which is less than a year na lang po yung balance sa sasakyan and kinuha niya po by force sa amin. yung sasakyan po. So, pinuli pay niya, uh, fully paid na po yung sasakyan niya, kinuha niya po. So, ano po yung habol ng mama ko po sa ganong situation po? Unang-una sa lahat, yung, yung pinasok ng mama mo is bawal. Kasi meron niyang provision sa mga bank on 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 loan, on personal property na na shuttle mortgage na hindi yan siya pwedeng ibenta at the time of within the period of this mortgage with the bank no hindi u pwedeng i-trans so any and all agreement between the two that's between you hindi yan papansin ng bank ko it's bawal talaga yan and and now if there is uh, wala usap usap lang man as friend as kayo in possession at kinuha now siguro the most that you could do is to retrieve back na lang the, the payments made by your mom if you could produce those receipts under your possession even if under the name doon sa may ari ng sasakyan nakapangalan sa sasakyan maybe there is a possibility possibility ah pero 50-50 po ito uh, hindi ko pa kasi alam ang true facts na ginakwento mo pero sa aking tingin 50-50 po may chance kayo i-recover yung nabayaran ninyo na amount doon sa bank oh, okay. uh, so parang yung mama ko po talaga yung walang karapatan oh, at the end of the day lesson yun na no Wendy yung mga po. ganyan sa kotse Pag inasyong niyo yung balance at kayo nagbabayan sa bangko, di ba nakalagay yung dating pangalan ng may-ari? Ako. Tapos ikaw magbabayad. Is last, mm-hmm. put your name doon sa payment. Ginawa ko na po yan. Eh. Mm-hmm. Ito ba? May pangalan na iba. Eh, ako nagbayad, hindi pinalalagay ko yung pangalan ko doon sa resibo. And it, it is allowed. It was allowed by... The East West Bank. So, oh, yun, yun, yun din po. Kasi in-acknowledge po kasi ng bank po si mama. So aware po Pero yung bank. Pero sana pinilagay niya yung pangalan ng mama mo. Yun nga lang po. Kasi hindi siya nagkaroon. Uh, hindi niya nisip na gawin yun po. Kasi niya. Parang ganun bagay. Magtanong po. Mm-hmm. Call a lawyer for a friend. Anong dapat? Kaya nga po eh. Kasi sayang. Ang, ang, ay, ang, ay, ang, ang ano ang... ang Ang ano ang ang before that terbong ang ang golden rule actually basta meron tayong transaction any transaction involving money maliit man o malaki 
wag po kayong magdalawang isip na mag-consult na abogado. Kasi at least babigyan kayo ng payo. Kanon lang man yung consultation pi para lang sa wala kayo ng sakit sa ulo, di ba? Mm-hmm. Alam din, ano yan, di ba? Pag may sakit kayo, pumunta kayo sa doktor. Correct. Bakit yung gamutin ang sarili nyo na? Sa lawyer, ayaw nyo pumunta. Kahit ko, Tony, ganito po ang sitwasyon. Ganito po. Kunti lang naman yung pang, pang, pangkapi lang yun. Alam mo, yeah. alam mo, Sir Bong, alam mo, Sir Bong, no, na totoo lang, I really wanted to reach all people dito sa to help them understand things pa, mga liliit pa. The problem is, ha, ah, hindi ko masagot-sagot ang mga tanong. Ang taami talaga masyadong mga tanong ba. Hindi ko makaya. So, by the way, guys, every, ano nga pala, every Saturday from 10 to 12, nagla-live ako. Parang, parang, tanong nyo lahat ng gusto nyo yung tanong dun. Parang nagtulpo na ako dun. Sige. Attorney, uh, sa attorney, attorney Raymond, attorney. May, may question ako, attorney ba? Go ahead. Yung sa Samuel na case, attorney ba? Anong tingin mo doon? Uh, Nag-groundbreaking na tapos uh, yung tulay ba? Mm. Uh, may ano ba tayo doon? Matutuloy ba yung tulay? Ah, tuloy na, tuloy na. Tuloy, na. Yung... Ala, na, tuloy na yun, tuloy na. Kasi yung... Tuloy na yan. Oh, the, the, the Rodriguez family actually filed a writ of kalikasan on environmental issues pero parang na-dismiss yata ang case and tuloy talaga na ground break na tuloy na uh, na mili- uh, beneficial yan sa lahat ng tiga yes yeah. so, no, lahat makikinabang <laughs> even me if I go to Davao I want to go oh, to the island I do pa doon sa may 2,000 permit event <laughs> Oh, magpunta tayo kay Ferlane kasi hindi because of that bridge mahal na yung property eh sino yung nagtatanong kanina last question si Angela ba yun? Marilyn nagtampo na tuloy si Marilyn oh, sige Marilyn go ahead hello Marilyn Hello po, attorney. Good evening. Sorry, late po. Na-trap po talaga ako sa, ano, sa bagyo. Okay, sige, go ahead. Uh, my question is, attorney, kasi mabibenta na yung lupa namin sa Batangas. And then, ang problema namin yung tenant. Ay, hindi, ano tawag doon, attorney? Tama bang tawagin na tenant? Kasi 40 years na sila nakatira doon eh. Uh-huh. Then, namatay yung parents namin is, yung papa ko is 28 years na. So, may demand yung nakatira doon ng isang milyon kasi alam nilang mabibenta na tama ba yung demand nila na amount attorney okay let us first uh, discuss on whether or not tenant ba sila kung tenant sila uh, ibig sabihin nagrerenta sila sa inyong property kasi wala na tayo yung tersera ang rule ngayon is agricultural leasehold tenancy na tayo dapat magrerent na sila no wala na po yung uh, two thirds one thirds ng crops nanen okay so Palagay natin, hindi nyo pa na-abolish yun. Yung, let's say, continue. Meron pa ba, ba kayong two-thirds, one-thirds na nakakatanggap pa ba kayo ng, ng, ng share from the crops? Wala na, Marlin. Po, Tony, residential po siya kasi dating pigirian sila, sila, na, sila po ang nababantay doon. Mula nung namatay yung father namin, sila na talaga straight up doon, hindi kami. Kasi so, wala pa lang, wala pa lang, ano, hindi pa lang farm? Kunti lang kasi siya, Tony. Ay, hindi. Walang tenancy. Walang tenancy yan. Walang tenancy dyan eh. Di, yung demand niya, wala yan. Dapat nga ni. Dapat nga ni. Kayo pa mag-demand ng back rentals eh. Yung mga unpaid back rentals. Sa 30 sila, nakatira sila dyan. No? 